Hi, this is Andrew Pierce with Epics at Purdue. In this short section, we're going to talk about just a few of the good and bad practices that you might come across during your Epics project. So you can help identify those bad practices in yourself to help you break out of them, help your team break through those bad processes, and also to identify those good processes and reinforce them in your projects. So a lot of this comes down to mindset and your experience as a designer. So most of you as students are novice designers. And in the research, they found that there are basically five concepts of design, but three that we really want to focus on where a novice designer might sort of live in this realm. The first is this idea of design arrogance. And that's where students don't place their designs in the context of the environment that they're going to work in. So they just think they know everything, essentially. And they go in with their experiences, their biases, and design something that works for them. So as we did things like the wallet or gift giving exercise, you found that those worked well for you, but you really had to start to understand the other person to design well for them. So this is the first thing we want you to learn to break out of, and that's why we focus so much of it early on, is starting to put yourselves in the standpoint of your users and to be able to really design for them. So if you see that design arrogance coming through in your teams, try and point it out and try and break through that and think in the terms of your user. The next is design shutdown. And this is where you essentially pick one solution, often the very first solution you think of, and you just head straight down that path as fast as you can. And then you get down, maybe you've done two or three semesters of that and found out that solution didn't work. And you should have figured it out sooner. And if you would diverge your solution space during the conceptual design phase, really think of a lot of different solutions and then put some thoughtful time into picking the best one. Do some analysis, do some prototyping with your users and try and understand what are the pros and cons of each solution. So you don't just go straight down that single point, right? Um, so consider all the alternatives. Even once you've chosen one and you get into detailed design, if you find that there is a better solution, then you need to stop and consider, okay, what are the trade-offs if we have to slow the project down to go back and pick this other feature set up or this different solution up? Is that worth it to our user? to have those additional features, or do they just want it quickly and we need to move back? Making those thoughtful decisions, so not getting into that design shutdown mentality. And then finally, avoiding design routinization. This is basically when design becomes routine and you think that you're going to follow it like a straightforward serial process, like you're working through your algebra homework. Thinking that you go step A, step B, and you're always going back to the design process and saying, okay, this is what we have to do exactly now. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's messy and complicated again. So don't think that you're going through the straightforward process. Iterate, try something, put yourself out there, find out what didn't work and come back and try it again, okay? So get past that straightforward model where you have in other classes where everything is a linear process. That's not the way that real world design works. So what does it look like if you're an experienced or a good designer? Well, first of all, you tolerate that ambiguity, or you might revel in that ambiguity. It's something useful to you, right? So you're working in a space where you're doing something really novel or really innovative and unique, or something that you personally have never done before, figuring out how to put yourself out there and look for those new ideas and new designs. So go through that divergent thinking, thinking of a bunch of different solutions, converge again, diverge again, converge again. Keep going through that until you come to an idea that really works and really cuts to the heart of the problem, has significant insights into the actual needs of the user. Second, they maintain sight of the big picture. So you don't get hung up on this one solution. You think about the whole system. You think about all of the stakeholders and the users. So maintain that big picture point of view. Oftentimes this comes in the idea of students who get caught up on their solution. And if their solution doesn't work, they feel like they're defeated. Instead of getting caught up on your solution and having a lot of emotional attachment to your solution, have a lot of emotional attachment to the idea of helping your partner and solving this problem. Come from a place of service in your work, and then you won't mind if your solution isn't the perfect one. You'll care that you bring this service to your community partner. And finally, a good designer handles uncertainty. They know that there are things they don't know, so they're gonna go out and step out and test them, try something and step back and try and learn little bits at a time to be able to move forward. And working in an area where the problem isn't well-defined, you have to spend time defining the problem and trying to thoroughly understand it in order to be successful. 
Overall, in our design process, some of the things you should avoid doing are ignoring your stakeholders and just designing for yourself. It never goes well. Don't get hung up on that one solution, especially not the first solution. Think through everything and really diverge your space. And don't be afraid to loop backward. Go through all those iterations. Embrace that process. Some things that you should do is keep your mind open to new ideas through every phase of the process. You may choose not to take those ideas on, even if they're good ones for the sake of time or other considerations, but keep your mind open to the fact that there are other ways of doing things. Remember, there is no right answer. This isn't a simple, straightforward problem with a simple, straightforward answer. You're doing real world, complex design. And finally, again, commit to solving the problem instead of committing to your solution. Really be open to exploring the solution space and bringing your partner something that helps them.